And so, um, I was selected to sail this canoe. Uh, it was an in initiation from our then going to become the Prime Minister of this country. They first met in a South Pacific uh, Forum, South Pacific Commission meeting. Then, that time we had South Pacific Commission from 70s to 1980s. And they said there should be a revived uh, our traditional festivities, cultural activities. And they say one should take place in Port Mosby, and one of the main events of the of the um, festival would be that each each country would come with a canoe to sail from their home country from uh, to Port Mosby. We used to be able to communicate with each other just paddling then, and, and if we used uh, mat for sails, mat uh, or something the wind to. We believe that we used to travel a lot around this, this. Uh, so I got my plot with my chart on the map and say yes, if I went this side, kept going, I would hit this island, uh, and I did. Even if it take a long time, I listened to the wave and it becomes just the same kind repeated uh, to, to be there. And so I feel that yes, we must get there. So we made it. Yes. He has to sail here without an engine, uh, without a radio. He just had to have a sail and uh, paddles. So I, uh, he said, maybe I've been sailing around here. Uh, maybe I could do it. So they asked me and said, I was prepared to take a risk. <laughs> yeah, because um, I, had to, I had to do it because they think that maybe Vanuatu is not ready to get independence yet. So I had to sail about 1,400 miles from here, from Vanuatu, through the Solomon Islands, and then from Solomon Islands, Honiara, direct to Port Mosby, because if I followed the islands, not, not Solomon's, and then cross, it I would have lost time. I had to get there by one month's time. So even though I had a shortcut through the ocean, it was very rough, I still, it took, still took me uh, one whole month to get there. Just about to leave, same night I left here, there was rebellion. Mm. So I had to steer out of, from Malikula, and the canoe was made on Malikula. Mm. Malikula. And uh, Sando is on the way. I have to pass Sando where there's rebellion. So I have to go away, steer away a long, long way out where they had the uh, patrolling, mm. crossing uh, from Mumbai down Sando back. So I had to steer away from course, long way that delayed me going through the Mosby. Uh, we had to go up heavy seas, down, when it's down, it's not going down slowly, it goes down like so, so people who are tilling, they would be looking down like this and they would like not to want to go down deep into the sea, in case it tends to want to go all the way. They would be afraid and they would be tilling like looking this way. <laughs> and, and so when it start go up, it's like it's going to go up and then fall back. It was very rough, so I've been wet the whole month in the, in the sea with rain and uh, sea and uh, no food. We were eating uh, raw potatoes with water. I catch water from the rain on a sail. So when it hits a sail and drips down, I put plastic and it to, to save water. And so that's how we, we lived on the raw, raw kumala with water. So finally we got to Port Mosby. And um, I had a big coral poison here, so I have to come back on the plane after with crutches, with my crew. The military boys come with a big lorry to take me up to the military base, where I had uh, my, my swollen leg here. I could not keep my pants off because it was hurting me, so I cut the leg off, pulled it out, and it was swollen from here to here. Very, very uh, gone septic. So when uh, they inject it, I went, the lorry went inside the workshop, I go that they stick a, a knife here. My blood shot up to the ceiling of the, the garage. <laughs> My blood was up there. At the Pacific Islands, we were there, they, they greeted us, and they were also had uh, slogans like saying, oh, it's just one who is ready for independence. We got back here just one more week before independence. So, uh, 
we left the canoe there because we could not sail it back. Uh, so they took it to pieces and put it on the ship that arrived later at the main wharf. And then we had uh, the people from the maritime uh, and the prime minister and the ministers meet uh, the canoe at the wharf and it was being lowered down uh, from the big ship down in the wharf and the national anthem and the Catholic priest, a French uh, priest, bring the, ch the children to sing the national anthem and it was quite uh, it was happening then. Uh, but uh, it was a tough, tough journey. Uh, it was the coldest part of the year, which I would not like to repeat <laughs> at this age. It was very risky. And uh, we had a rebellion then on by those of friends who don't want independence, the Francophones. Mm. They think that uh, we would be a threat to, to them, but we were not. So, uh, I am, uh, even after, after you, uh, during when the rebellion was on, uh, we called the New Guineans, because we had France and England here with the soldiers, and they were not doing anything. They have to sign an agreement for whatever course of action they want to take against the, the rebellions. And uh, Papua New Guinea just came and do the normal thing, like uh, there's a silence period, nobody will run, drive around, we'll control the town at night. But what I saw, uh, children, of, children of this generation don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, now we think that we have re a Republican government, uh, Republic of Vanuatu. At this time, I feel very insecure. And, uh, I mean, my, I don't know what will happen to my grandchildren. Uh, will they be all right? Will they be forced to tell me a gun battle one time against the government and, or people against the people? Like I've seen it. I've been arrested. Without this is uh, the fourth of November, two thousand and eight. I'm talking about this film, which was filmed in 1974 when I was young. And now I'm over 60, and I've just been arrested by the military. <laughs>